Welcome, welcome to this, the third and final in a series on restoring a Rockwell Delta pedestal grinder. If you are just now joining at the tail end of this process, stop, go back, watch the first two. They're moderately interesting. In this video, everything is going back together. All the grinder's parts have been cleaned, de-rusted, wire brushed, primered, painted, and chromed. Oh, okay, not, not really, not chrome. I didn't chrome anything. But it's all cleaned up, shiny, and looking spiffy. Um, yeah, that's me. Cleaning wires. Why? Because, well, you know, wires conduct electricity better when they're clean. No, no, that's, that's a lie. Uh, it's because I, I'm ridiculous and pedantic and couldn't put this thing back together with grime all over those wires. Like any responsible adult, I'm going to blame my parents for that. My mother probably dropped me on my head when I was an infant. She's never owned up to it, but I suspect. I decided to go ahead and install the original switch. I had flushed it out with some of that, you know, spray contact cleaner, and a river of mud came out of it, so hey, you know, it's probably just fine. That was a decision that would later come back to bite me, but you'll see more on that later. The original US made motor capacitor tested fine, so I just reused it. There's no point in replacing it. I'm pretty sure somebody had been into the base of this before me because most of these little ring terminals were pretty chewed up so I ended up replacing them and then cut them all back off later for, you know, reasons. The strain relief for the original power cord was just a simple knot, and I can tie a simple knot! So, that's what I did. I did splurge for new bearings. Um, one of the original bearings was pretty gritty. The other one was okay, felt just fine, but you know, you're in there anyway. Their bearings are cheap, just go ahead and replace them. I was able to find new original stock bearings on eBay, so I just went with those. Both bearings were retained on either side of the motor with a couple of pan-headed screws.
Now, at this point, I had everything together enough to at least test, and I was sitting there thinking, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do this? Yeah, I do. So I plugged it in, and it spun up, which was a good thing, but it wouldn't turn off. There was that switch again. Now, instead of being in a locked-off position, it was in a locked-on position. And at this point, I had had enough of the switch. Sorry about some of that fan noise on the last clip. It was about 96 degrees outside the day I was putting this together and, well, you know, you need a fan. I'm not sure how visible it is in the video, but that motor plate had some kind of layer of gray, opaque, schmoo on it. I, I don't I don't have any idea what it was. It didn't look like paint over spray, um, but it it also wouldn't wipe off with like standard solvents. I had tried lacquer thinner and mineral spirits to no avail. So I decided the best way to get rid of it was to put some paint stripper over it and see if that would take it off. I was really hoping that that aluminum plate had been anodized rather than painted because obviously the paint stripper would have taken the paint off too but it came out just fine and all the crud that was on it came off it looked really nice actually after it was all cleaned up now for sure it would have been smarter to clean up this motor plate while the motor wasn't painted but i forgot to do it so anyway i had a little bit of damage caused to the paint by this paint stripper so it required me to mask it off and do a little bit of touch up it wasn't any big deal it came out okay one thing I didn't particularly like was how dull the plate looked after all of its chemical cleaning. And because the rest of it was so shiny and because, you know, I'm basically 12 years old in my mind, I decided the plate had to be shiny too, so I masked everything off again and shot it with a couple coats of lacquer. I had not originally painted the motor bolts, I just left them as raw steel, but I decided now's the time to make a couple of minor cosmetic tweaks. So I have some steel bluing solution that's used, you know, in, I don't know, gun manufacturing and stuff. So I just painted everything with some of that. It, it gave it just a very slight bluish tint and darkened the steel up. It ended up looking pretty nice. little comparison. The one on the left has been treated with gun bluing, the one on the right is not. It's a pretty subtle effect. It just darkens the steel up and gives a little bit of a, I don't know, bluish patina. And here's where I got rid of the original switch that had been giving me so much grief. Um, the replacement is a single pole switch. The original was a double pole that switched both live and neutral. Uh, the single pole only switches live, so I had to make a couple of wiring changes to tie the neutrals together. But uh, I think this is going to work better, and I, I remember reading somewhere at some point that it was actually unsafe to switch both live and neutral through the same switch. Something about if a short occurred in the switch, you can end up energizing the tool with live main voltage. So anyway, this will be better. 
The grinder, as received, did not have a switch in the column to control the light switch, and I did want to be able to switch that on and off separately, so I had to drill a hole in the bottom plate so I could pass the wiring through and down into the base. And while I was on my safety kick, it also occurred to me that somebody had cut off the grounding lug inside of this grinder and there was no ground. So I went ahead and stripped the wire back, put a connector on so that I could ground the entire unit properly. Before I buttoned up the bottom plate, I pulled the wires through that will eventually be run up to the grinder's lights and got everything tied together. I also went ahead and did the wiring needed for the switch that will go down into the base and got everything wire nutted together. Was not crazy about running a wire through that base plate unprotected, but I had this small waterproof grommet thing. I didn't really need the waterproof piece of it. So I just pulled the rubber plug out and used that as a, as a protection from those sharp edges of that hole. There's a dust shield, I guess it is, on either side of the motor shaft, and it's a pretty tight friction fit against the retaining washer that gets put on the shaft later. I just didn't, it didn't feel right to put that in without at least some kind of lubrication, so I packed a small amount of grease around it, figuring that this is probably going to be the only time that it gets some lube, so this is the time to do it. Besides, everything fits better with a little lube, right? I did purchase two new grinding wheels for this unit, uh, one 80 grit and the other one was 120 grit. <laughs> you know, obviously no way I'd be reusing the one that came with it. See? So pretty, all blued. really the mark of a high quality tool when things just fit together well and that's one thing I definitely will give this grinder is that everything fit together really nicely. I was able to find a replacement spark arrestor on eBay, because eBay is awesome. Um, I went ahead and did a bluing effect on them both. It didn't turn out exactly as well as I had hoped. Um, the finish on it wasn't perfect, but you know, whatever, it's a grinder. Here are the two tool rest brackets. Can you tell which one I made and which one was the original?
Yeah, that's the one on the right. You can see I was a little bit off in the corner. I didn't get it quite as smooth as the original one, but honestly, for as little metalworking as I do, I think it turned out pretty good. The one safety shield that was in the grinder when I got it was actually two pieces of eighth inch plexiglass laminated together. And I don't know why that was. I don't know why you'd laminate two pieces of plexiglass together. Plexiglass doesn't shatter easily, so I don't know what the benefit would be to having laminations. Anyway, I found some quarter inch stuff and cut two new shields out on the bandsaw. I found a seller on eBay that was selling replacement light reflectors made out of polished stainless steel uh, for the Delta Triple Duty Grinder. That worked out really well for me because I was missing two of them and the two that were in place were the original nickel plated steel and they were really heavily rusted so I didn't relish the thought of having to try to strip those, polish them and re-nickel plate them. So it worked out really great to find replacements already available. Although this grinder, of course, originally came with incandescent bulbs, I found replacements in LED. These will be brighter, they'll last longer, and obviously consume less power. plexiglass shields are held in with a couple of pieces of narrow spring steel. I was missing two of them, but again, fortunately, eBay provided me with a seller that was selling replacements.
When you're restoring an old machine, I think it's nice to keep a small bit of the original patina or old paint on one highly visible part. For this grinder, it shall be this plate on the pedestal base that houses the light switch. Isn't that a lovely bit of old rusty metal? Yeah, no, I'm totally kidding. This will be so much better. Anytime I disassemble something, I keep all the parts together in one box, and I always have some stuff left over. This time was no different. <laughs> 